Welcome to Zeiss Caligo. In this video, we will cover how to create and measure a space point, circular hole, and a rounded slot using a stylus system. We will also explain what information is provided in the inspector window of a feature. If you want to try Zeiss Caligo, take a look at the description below. There, you'll find links to download the software, request a free trial, and download training data. Now that we have gotten that out of the way, let's hop in the software. We will begin by opening up the Caligo training session that was included in the training data for the starter guide. Next, we will load the appropriate feature templates and toolbox for tactile measurements. This can be done by right-clicking on one of the categories for the toolbox and selecting Settings. Then we'll select Load and open the toolbox for tactile measurements that was included in the training data. Toolbox underscore TATBX. If your toolbox doesn't appear as it shows here, please reference the video Configuring Measuring Templates in Caligo for more information. Now that our toolbox is loaded, we'll set the tool and appropriate angle for measuring our features in our controller window. Caligo will automatically apply the active tool and its angle to the measurement strategy of newly created features. In our case, we will select the tool to be 200 underscore one from the drop-down menu and set the A angle to 90 degrees, then the B angle to 90 degrees. Then select the icon to the right of the angles to apply the angle change. Now that we have the correct tool and angle set, We'll use one of our wizards to create the features from the CAD model. The wizards are located in the View drop-down menu at the top of the window, and the one that we'll use to create features is called the Features Wizard. To briefly explain the main functions of the Features Wizard, first, you have a drop-down listing all the different types of features and templates you can create for your measurement plan. The next area is the method of how you wish to generate a feature. You can extract the feature from the CAD model, generate it using discrete points, or create points along a line, create points within a polygon, or create an intersection line on the CAD model. Now, let's go through how to create a point. There are a couple different types of points here, but the one that we'll want to use is a space point, which is just called point in the drop-down menu. Then we will use the PNT underscore STD template that will apply specific settings when it is created. Most customers prefer to use this type of point since it has fixed X, Y, and Z values. Then we'll select the second option under method called discrete points, as this will allow us to click anywhere on the CAD model to generate a point. Now we'll click on the CAD model where we want to create a point. Then, highlighting main measurement plan in the measurement plan explorer so that the point will be added to the end of the measurement plan. Then, clicking the checkmark icon in the features wizard to add it. The next feature that we'll create is going to be a circular hole. So we'll change our type of feature in the features wizard by selecting the feature circle and then the measurement template named Circle. For this type of feature, we will extract it from the CAD, so we'll change our method from discrete points to selection in the Features wizard. Now, to extract the circle at the proper location, we'll need to have Show Edges turned on in our CAD view toolbar. Then, click the curve on the CAD to select the circle. We'll add it to the end of the measurement plan by clicking on Main Measurement Plan in the Measurement Plan Explorer window, then click the check mark to add it. Lastly, we'll create a rounded slot feature. So we'll change our type of feature in the Features wizard by selecting the feature Slot and then the measurement template named Slot RND. Then, we'll use the same process as we did for the circle to extract it by selecting the edge where the slot meets the surrounding surface and clicking the check mark to add it to our measurement plan. 
Now that we have all of our features created, it is a good habit to close the feature wizard when we're done. Let's look inside the inspector window by double-clicking on the point feature in the measurement plan explorer. The inspector window contains all the properties related to the feature. The tree structure under the folder section is basically the same for all features. To provide a quick explanation of the four main sub-branches in the tree, the first branch is related to how your feature will be evaluated. Here, you can modify things such as the feature type to be evaluated, calculation methods, and more. The second branch in the list will contain your nominal information and tolerances of the feature. You can edit what characteristics are tolerance by ticking the checkbox and setting your upper and lower tolerance. The third branch in the list will be your data source. This will define how the data is gathered to evaluate the feature. So, in our case, it contains information for all the steps of the tactile measurement strategy. Lastly, the fourth main branch will be visualization. This branch will allow you to modify what properties of the feature will be shown in the CAD view. Now that we've gone through a brief overview of the inspector window, we'll take a look at the measurement strategy for the features. We'll do this by first clicking the plus sign for measurement contact, then the plus sign for measurement strategy. Here we have each part of our strategy, which is our settings, then probing point. The strategy will always be executed in a top-down order. We will take a look at our settings by clicking on the plus sign. In the settings, you will define your tool and angle to use for the measurement, your CMM dynamics, distances, and clearance planes if used in the measurement plan. Highlighting tool in the list. We see that the tool and A and B angles that we set prior to creating this feature were applied to its measurement strategy. Then, the last step in our strategy, we have a single probing point to measure the feature. These settings will be sufficient for us to measure the point so we can close the inspector window. Next, let's look at our measurement strategy for the circle. We'll first double-click the circle in our Measurement Plan Explorer, then click the plus sign for Measurement Contact, then the plus sign for Measurement Strategy. Here we can see that our measurement strategy contains Settings, Intermediate Position, Working Plane, Circle, and another Intermediate Position. Taking a look at our settings, we can see that we have the proper tool and angle set. Then, moving directly above the hole with the intermediate position. Then, measure a working plane with three points. After measuring the working plane, we will measure four points inside the hole. Lastly, intermediate position to clear the probe to be away from the part. This strategy looks sufficient for the circle, so we can close the inspector window and open up the slot inspector window to take a look at its strategy. Following the same process as before, we can see our measurement strategy is very similar to the circle with our strategy being settings, intermediate position, working plane, slot strategy, and another intermediate position. We can see that we have the appropriate tool and angles for our measurement an intermediate position to move directly over the slot. Then, measuring a working plane with three points. Then we'll measure the slot with eight points. And lastly, an intermediate position to clear away from the part. This strategy looks adequate to measure the slot so we can close the inspector window. Now that we've confirmed that our strategy and settings for these features are appropriate, we are ready to execute them in simulation. First, let's turn on our display of the CMM to be able to see our measurement by going up to the simulation drop-down menu and selecting display of the CMM model. Before we execute the features, 
will slow down the speed of the CMM in simulation to 50%. This can be done by left-clicking in the CAD view window and then clicking the page down key until the speed is set to 50% in the top right corner of the CAD view window. Now, we are ready to run each feature in simulation. Let's start with the point feature by right-clicking on it in the Measurement Plan Explorer and selecting Run. Now, in order to initiate the CMM to run in CNC, select the Play button in the Dialog Prompt window. Everything looks good for the point, so we'll move on to the circle feature. Doing the same steps, we'll right-click on the circle feature in the Measurement Plan Explorer and select Run. Then click on the play icon to run it in CNC. The measurement is sound for the circle. Now, let's move on to the slot. Doing the same steps to run the slot in simulation. We see that all three features were measured in simulation successfully. This will conclude this video on creating measuring elements using a tactile sensor in Caligo. To learn how to create measuring elements using an optical sensor, make sure to check out the video, Creating a Measuring Element, Optical. And if you're looking for a more comprehensive training, check out the Zeiss Caligo Basic Training. You'll find the link in the description below.